Right. So, so what we have done is we have packaged this data fusion product into one single CSV file, in, sorry, one single exe file. Now this is the file which is required on it on the user's PC. If you want to deploy this on an individual users, uh, you can probably use this file on a user's PC or if you want to have this on the server, you can place it on the server and you can share the links which I'm gonna uh, show you now. Apart from this file, we can also see there is something called config file and there is a log file. And of course, we also have some license files and you can see the size of those files are pretty tiny. Uh, and the only file, which is the main file, which we need to run the data fusion is this one. Now, let me double click on this file. Now, as you can see, I'm just gonna double click on this file. I'm not gonna install this. So you don't need to install this uh, product uh, simply by double clicking on this. Okay, and you'll see um, the web, your web browser, your default web browser will open up with this kind of a form. Now, this is the data fusion link or the data fusion page, which is required as the first step for a user to set up um, and get the link. As you can see, we need a link by which we can use that link in the Power BI uh, dashboard. Now for this demonstration, what I'll do is I'll probably go through two things. One is we're gonna see how we can pull the data from TM1 cube. And we will also see how we can pull the metadata, like as I mentioned, a product or element or a region, or it could be a GL code. So those are the two examples we're gonna see in this demonstration. Right. So before we fill up this form, I just want to showcase that I have got a TM1 instance running on my instant on my laptop uh, called SData, which is just a dummy instance. And we can see within that I have got uh, plenty of cubes. So we will be using this cube called Sales Cube, and we're going to use, as you can see, I've got plenty of uh, views, public views available, and some private views. And we probably will use one of this view for the example. So the first step the user needs to type in is the IP address of the TM1 server. Now let's say if uh, I am one of the user, let me just go back to this diagram. Let's say if we have these three users and let's say all these three users have this data fusion, which is when I say data fusion, they have these files, all these five files on their, on their laptop. Now all these three users, they can individually, they can double click on this exe file and then each one of the users will have this form come up. Again, it's up to you how you want to deploy this. It could be individual users or it could be on a server as well, where you can, as a developer, you can create the link and share the link with the users. But in this example, let's go through an example of um, this users. They will be creating the links and they want to use these links in their Power BI dashboards. Now let's say this user, uh, he's running uh, the data fusion on his laptop and that user is double clicking on this datafusion.exe file and we see and that user is is able to see this form now so there are a few things which this user needs to fill up as i mentioned the first thing is what is the ip address of the tm1 server so in this case i've got uh, my laptop uh, name which is desktop cvd 79tq the next thing we need to see is the http port number which is for this instance called sdata. Now that's something this user needs to check up with a tier one developer and, and get that port number. So uh, the port number, the HTTP port number, not the port number, the HTTP port number I have set it up for sdata is 8010. I'm gonna type in the username and password, which is I'm gonna use the admin and I'm gonna use the admin and the password. So right. So once I have done these four things, the next thing I need to select or the user needs to select uh, the mode. Now we have three different types of modes uh, within this data fusion. The first one is the base mode, which is basically the, your integrated security mode one. We also have the CAM security, which is integrated security mode five, if you're using Cognos BI as your authentication. And if you're using IBM Planning Analytics on cloud, we also have that as an option. So those are the three modes we have set up uh, for data fusion to generate the link. Now, I'll be using the first option or the first mode, which is the base mode uh, for this demonstration. So let me use that. But the next thing this form will ask you is the method. Now, when I 
click on that method drop down there is a drop down list and within the drop down list you can see there are five different types of methods the first method this is a your public views the second one is the private view of that user for instance this could be admin or this could be jack or this could be nick could be any user now those users will have their own private views if they want to use their own private views they can use this option we also have got controlled cubes uh, if controlled cubes are basically your curly braces cubes so for example let me go back to this and if i click on display control objects you will find all these extra cubes which starts with this curly braces at the start so those things are called control cubes now if a user wants to pull data from let's say client groups or client security um, then probably they can use the control cube view then we have the dimensions so dimensions are basically your list of all the dimensions so these are the probably about 10 dimensions i have and the last option i have is the control dimension hierarchies again those are your curly braces a dim uh, any dimensions we start with the curly braces so those are your control dimensions so those are the five different options you have for this method now for this example i will use the view which is a public view now you will notice as soon as i click on that this first option called view data fusion will start talking to tm1 and it will pull all the tm1 cubes so let me close the control objects So we have about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cubes within the S data. Now, when I select the first option, the view as the method, then you will see those seven cubes will pop up in a separate drop down. Let's have a look. So I'm going to select view. And now you can see data fusion is now talking to TM or the planning analytics. And then it will give us the option to select the cube. As you can see, I have got a new drop down. Now we can see those seven cubes which we just saw in here right now the user can select which cube view uh, or which cube they want to select so i'm going to select the sales cube now again you will notice as soon as i select any one of this cube the data fusion will start talking to planning analytics and it will bring all the views available within that cube now at this point you can see the view, select view is blank because we haven't selected the cube so i'm going to select the cube called sales cube and you can see data fusion is now talking to planning analytics all right so now uh, the form has been refreshed now we can see all the views which we can see on the sales queue so these are all the public views there could be some private views so those private views will not be part of this because we have selected the view which is the public views so within the sales queue i'm gonna select the first view called act versus budget now the next option we have on this form is whether we want to apply the separate zero or we want to leave the view as is so what this means is let me open the act versus budget view now let's assume this view was like this which is you have a lot of zeros in there which means the separate zero is not applied now we can force this view to have the separate zero like this to be switched on by using this thing called separate zero so apply the separate zero uh, and bring the data from PM on the planning analytics cubes or we can leave that view as is it could be a separate zero applied there or there could be no separate zero so so that is what uh, this option is so maybe I'll just leave that separate zero switched on as a default now this sales cube has got five dimensions as you can see we have one two three four five so those are the five dimensions has been listed and each of the dimension has got multiple attributes it could be aliases or it could be attributes now it's optional to select any one attribute uh, if you want to as you can see we have multiple attributes within the this region dimension 
or if you want you can ignore it you can skip this step and we don't have to select any attribute two more steps to go so this step is asking us which bi tool are you using in your organization is it power bi or click or is it tableau the reason why we have kept it as a separate drop down is because the data fusion the code uh, we have written uh, is it slightly different for to tableau and it is a bit different to power bi and click and that's why we have segregated but from a user experience uh, you will still go through the exact same form it's only this option you need to select if you're using tableau then you select this or if you're using power bi or click you select the first option i'm going to use this one because i've got power bi on my laptop all right so once this form has been filled up the last thing we need to do in this is click on this button called get link let me click on this now what is happening now is data fusion is going through each and every box like what is the name of the computer the http port number the username password and all the parameters what we have filled it will encrypt all that information in a in a single link and when i say link you can see here so you can see it's very hard to understand what is happening behind this but what this link is encrypted which means this link when we copy and paste in power bi we will be able to pull the data from the planning analytics queue now let's see that now we do have this button called copy to clipboard if you want to copy the link or if you want you can simply drag this and also say copy as well so that will work or you can click on this and it will say yep you have copied the text in this box all right so that was the pretty much the last step to click on the get link now what we need to do is we will go to power bi now so let me bring up my power bi application on my laptop all right so this is power bi desktop which is running on my laptop so let me close this all right so now we have copied the link from the data fusion form we need to go to this thing called get data in power bi select this option called web so when we select that option web uh, there will be a pop-up window um, asking us to paste the url so we'll right click and say paste so this is the same link which we copied from data fusion the form so let me just go to the first part so that's your link and then we click ok now at this point data fusion will help us uh, to generate the path by which we'll be able to pull the data from your planning analytics cubes into power bi so as you can see now power bi is able to talk to planning analytics and it will be able to pull the data in a few seconds all right so as you can see now i can see the data has come out uh, which is looking pretty much exactly like the tier one cube view so let me just open that so that tier one cube view is now in there i'll do a few things to make things easy as you can see that this is a query and it has got some some random uh, letters like get data so let's make it easy uh, by right clicking and say we'll rename this and we'll call this as the same as your name of the cube which is sales cube okay right so let's just say sales cube and press enter and once i'm i'm done with the renaming i'll just say close and apply
it's creating a connection in the model so basically it will bring up a table on the right side as you can see it, it managed to pull 20 records and now we can see we have a sales cube and if i expand this and we can see all those dimensions which we have here so what we can do is to make it easy we'll just quickly rename this and we'll give the exact same name as what we have so account one so we'll just follow the same naming standard as what we have here and then we have act versus but then we have model then the month region let's keep renaming this we'll rename act versus but we'll rename the next call this as model then we'll rename the next one this one is month next one is region and the last one is basically your measure which is i can rename that to be a value all right so now this one looks very much similar to your tm1 cube so we have the sales cube we have a table called sales cube and then we have all these you know, fields or columns which is basically your dimensions here now if i if we click one click on the sales cube and if we go to the data tab we will see the data set here now the most important thing which a lot of users or a lot of customers they ask when does data fusion this form is it a database or does it store your our tm1 or planning analytics cubes now let me go back to this diagram now the answer is no data fusion doesn't store your planning analytics cube it only acts as a connector which helps to pull your data from your planning analytics environment into the your power bi or other bi tools so it's simply a pipe you can say it's a pipe uh, which helps to uh, to bring the data from one uh, planning of your planning analytics area to your power, your bi tools it doesn't store your your data now the next thing most of the customers they ask okay where is the data when data fusion helps to pull the data from the planning analytics where does the data flow to the answer is the data stores within the power bi itself so that is where i that is the reason why we are here in this page where i want to show you that when we build this data set or the dashboard uh, we click on this sales cube we go to the data set and we can see the data resides within this dashboard it's not stored in data fusion now one more example if i have to give you is let me go back to this cube t one cube we can see the numbers we have the exact same numbers what we have in the planning analytics cube is there in power bi now let me add a few more records let's say i want to add say 700 for this actuals and then let's say 650 or maybe 700 again for this budget now i've added two more records into this planning planning analytics cubes now for us to get that new records which just got recently added it could be a inputs from a user because it could be a budget and forecast or it could be actuals flowing from your source system now there are two options within power bi either you can schedule this power bi dashboard to run at say every day in the morning six o'clock or we can allow the users to right click on this and say refresh now when a user clicks on this option called refresh you will notice that data fusion will come into this picture will help us to pull those two extra records which is basically now you can see the 700 and 700 is now loaded into the power bi which means your dashboard which you will be building on top of this data set will be exactly same as your tier one cube now that is where the the real power of data fusion is you don't need an IT person or a Power BI developer or a TM1 developer to help bringing your planning analytics data into Power BI. 
it is a self-service tool where it will allow the users who are using this or building this power bi dashboards to easily bring the planning analytics cube data into power bi by simply right clicking and saying refresh data all right so that was the first example which i wanted to showcase the second example i wanted to showcase is what about the metadata so let me go back to this application form and let me reload this and this time we will select a different option so i'll start with the computer name or the tm1 server name which is this the port number for the instance s data is 8010 i've got the username and password the method i'm going to select is base because that's the mode i'm in integrated security mode one and this time the method i'm going to have is dimension hierarchies i want to bring some dimensions as well so let me click this one and as i select that you will notice data fusion is now talking to planning analytics and it will list me all the dimensions which are available in the s data now one of the important thing to note here is data fusion respects the tm1 security so when i say that that means if a user let's say kevin kevin is logging in and kevin has got access to only uh, let's say the first three dimensions so data fusion will respect the security and for kevin who has got access only to those three dimensions only those three dimensions will be displayed not the other because i have logged in as admin i'm able to see everything but let's say the user has got access to only two cubes out of seven cubes they will only see those two cubes so data fusion respects on the security model which is within the tm1 or the planning analytics so in this example i'm going to select the dimension called region and you can see here um, data fusion is now talking to planning analytics and it will bring all the subsets which are within the region dimension so we have something called backup we have a subset called europe and we also have a subset called leaf level now let's quickly go back to the this region and let's have a look if that matches yep those are the three uh, we have and you can see here the leaf level i have created that leaf level as a dynamic subset so let me just show you so you can see here it's a dynamic subset which means if any new regions gets added into this uh, this subset will automatically refresh so it's very important what type of subsets or what type of views you set up in planning analytics so that it becomes easy for you to create one link and that one link will work you don't have to keep changing so one link is for one cube view or one link is for one dimension so maybe i'll explain a bit more in detail about how many links do you have to create but so far we have created one link and we're going to create one link for this region dimension so let me select the leaf level and you can see here if i want i can bring the attributes of the region dimension as well again that's an optional field i'm gonna ignore it so you can leave it as blank the next two options are which we have already seen uh, i am using power bi on my laptop so i'm gonna use this option and then finally i'm gonna click on the get link now at this point as i mentioned get link basically will generate an encrypted HTTP link, uh, which basically holds all this information. Now let me copy this. So, so you can copy this. You can click on this icon to copy the link, or you can just select and right click and copy as well. So both will work. All right. Now let me go back to Power BI. All right, and we've already got Sales Cube. That's good. Now let's add one more link. So I'm gonna select web and paste the URL and click OK. Now it will do the exact same thing what it did for the sales cube data. So it will create a table. all right so now we can see uh, this link managed to pull all the countries 
from the region dimension. Now, similar to what we did for sales cube, we will also rename this one and let's call this as region. And then we will click say close and apply. So we're gonna see sales cube, which we already done that, which is which holds your cube data. And we're gonna see one more table called region. Yep, here it is. Now let's one click on that and see what is there inside. So one click and let's go to the data. And we can see here we have got the child, which is all the countries. We've got the first parent, the next parent, and the grandparent, which is the world. So let me just quickly go through that. So if I come here, region, so you can see here, world is the, the top node. Then we have Europe and Americas, which is here. So Europe has got different regions, and within that we have you know, different countries. So that's the different levels we have for this dimension. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to add a new element or a new region. So we have two regions. One is Europe and one is Americas. So I'm going to create one more uh, region called Asia. And within Asia, I'm going to have one element called, let's say, China. I'm going to save now let's say this element was added it could be manually added by some user or it could be an element which has come from your source system could be your erp system or your hr system or could be any any source system which you have used a tm1 process to pull that uh, elements into this hierarchy all right so just double check that so here it is so we have world so we have this europe americas and asia if you cancel this now, as we did the same uh, as we did for sales cube, where a user can right click and refresh the data set. Similarly, we can right click on this region. At this point, we don't have China or Asia in this table, but we're gonna right click on this region and say refresh data. So again, this is when data fusion comes into the picture. It helps us to pull those new elements and we can see just below this, country we're gonna see china popping up here it is so now we have china which is the asia is a region and the, the top node is the world now again as i mentioned it could be a manual right click refresh or it could be a scheduled or automated refresh which can be set up as well but in this example i'm just using this option of right click and um, the use the user uses this option called refresh now we don't have to go through and and add the other dimensions which basically your model your month and things like that because you're going to create a, you're going to use this data fusion to create uh, to generate a link for each of the dimensions and you're going to place a one by one so now we know for every cube view or every dimension subset, we need to generate one link. But if you build those links or use the subset, like a dynamic subset, like how I use the leaf level as a subset, which is a dynamic, then it becomes easy that you don't have to recreate the link every time a new element gets added. So it's very important when you want to create a link that you, uh, I mean, again, it depends on what is the usage here or what is that we want to try to achieve. It's better to use dynamic subsets or dynamic views by which the view, if a new data set gets added or if a new element gets added, then those kind of things automatically flows into your Power BI dashboard. Now, again, all this data resides in your or the user's Power BI dashboard, not in Data Fusion. All right, I'll show you one example of what uh, we have done for one of the examples. So I'm just going to open one of the dashboards which we have built. So I'm going to use this dashboard which is built in Power BI. So let me open this one just to show you how does that end product looks like. So once we create links to pull the data from different cubes and different dimensions and how a user can build their own dashboard. 
uh, as the dashboard is getting loaded, we can see the right side, um, you have the sales data, which is the cube. And then we can see here for this dashboard, I've got the region, month, model, and account, which are basically the dimensions I've created as tables. And once this, all these tables are, are set up, because each table is a data fusion link. Behind this, there is a data fusion link, which is helping to bring the data from your planning analytics cubes into the Power BI. Now, once those things are built, you might have to build this model or the relationship, which looks something like this. So you have that sales data, which has this five or six dimensions. Now, each of those dimensions, we can simply link it. For example, the month table um, is linked to the the month dimension or the month column uh, within the sales data. So this is a very easy step for us to link this, uh, all these tables, which is basically the six tables. And once that step is done, then we can build something like this. Again, if you have the skill set to build uh, something like this, then it's just a matter of dragging and dropping and you will be able to build your dashboard. Uh, as you can see, I've got Americas and Europe and and if I right click and say refresh, which probably I think uh, I might be using a different data set here, but the idea here is if I right click and refresh, if the Asia was there in the S data instance, then you will see Asia uh, added into this uh, filters automatically. So now this becomes a very powerful dashboard where a user is using Power BI for reporting purpose, but behind this is a data set and that data set is linked to your planning analytics cubes. And all this will work simply by right clicking and either, you, as I said, refresh, or you can schedule these reports to automatically refresh. Let's say you want to update your sales cube data, at, let's say at four o'clock in the morning, and that has been set up to refresh at four o'clock, and then you build this dashboard and refresh these tables at, let's say, six o'clock in the morning. When the users, they come and access their dashboards in Power BI, let's say at eight o'clock or nine o'clock, they have the exact same data set what is there in the TM1 or the planning analytics cubes. So in that case, they don't even have to refresh. If it's a real time, then yes, we can schedule this to refresh every minute or two minutes. But let's say if it's a sales data set where they, you want to have once a day data refresh, maybe something like this will help you where four o'clock, you want to refresh your planning analytics cubes six o'clock in the morning, you set up uh, this schedule uh, report uh, to refresh uh, and then nine o'clock or eight o'clock when the user starts, they have this dashboard ready for them to access. All right, so let me just go back to this PPT and let me just close off with a few uh, couple of slides. Uh, just wanna summarize what we just saw. Uh, so with the help of Data Fusion, you can see it you almost have the real-time access to TM1 data. I mean, you right-click and say refresh, or you can also schedule the report by which the exact same data set, what you have in planning analytics cubes, you have it on your Power BI dashboard or your other BI tools. We also saw there was no dependency on exports and imports, like the example I gave where a TM1 developer has to export the IT has to give us the shade folder path and the Power BI developer has to import that data set into the Power BI. Now everything gets eliminated. The user have got the power and they can use a self-service approach where they themselves can generate a link and pull the data from planning analytics cubes into Power BI. Not only the cube data, we also saw the dimensions and the hierarchies can be brought into Power BI by using this data fusion form. It's a self-service utility. There is not much, there is not much dependency on the IT or other developers within your organization. The beauty about this tool is there is no scripting required. You don't need your users to know certain lines of code for you to pull data from planning analytics cubes to uh, data fusion, sorry, to Power BI. Simple one click will do the magic for them easy of connect, which means you don't need any third party tools like Java or other uh, softwares to be running on your laptop. As I mentioned, you just need this .exe file. 
which has been packaged with all the relevant third party tools needed to run on your laptop. And of course, the last line, as you can see, it works on most of the major BI tools like Power BI, Tableau, and Click. So it supports all the three uh, BI tools. All right, the last slide I have is currently we are running a, a webinar offer. So which is basically we will provide you Data Fusion, the full feature there. We are not taking away any feature from Data Fusion. We'll give you the full software for a 60 day free trial. Now during this 60 day free trial, our team will install. So if in case you get stuck with the installation or how to set up, our team will support you during this installation and the configuration of the data, data fusion, whether you want to pick your dev, dev environment or you want to test on your prod environment, it's up to you, but you get the 60 day free trial and with our team supporting at the initial phase where whether you want to install or configure using our resources. As I mentioned, you will have the full support provided by Octane during this trial version of the, the trial period, which means if you get stuck, you can email us to support at octanesolutions.com.au and our support team members will help you with any queries you have. And what happens after 60 days? There is no obligation to purchase Data Fusion at the end of your trial, which means after 60 days, you decided, nope, this is something not working out in your environment. You can simply delete the files which we have given you, and, and that's pretty much. But if you decided, yep, it is something which will help your organization, then probably you can get in touch with us and we will go through the, the contract and the license files and all those things. And, and that's pretty much, I think uh, that's all I wanted to run through. Um, and if you want to yeah, get in touch with us, yeah, as I mentioned, you can email us at support at octanesolutions.com.au and one of our team members uh, will be in touch with you. So